Kali Linux is one of the most widely used open source operating system for ethical hacking and penetration testing. It is a Debian based operating system designed for digital forensics and penetration evaluation. It is maintained and funded by Offensive Security and ships with a vast array of tools. The tools range from information gathering to final reporting. These enable security and IT professionals to assess the security of their systems. Some of the utilities that are available include John the Reaper, Hydra, Metasploit, Empire, Starkiller, SQL Map, and more. Continue watching this video to learn how to install the version 2022.3 of the operating system on VirtualBox version 7 in a few simple steps. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to show you how to download VirtualBox version 7 and also how to download the Kali Linux ISO image file. So open a new browser window and run a simple Google search for VirtualBox. In the returned results, click on the virtualbox.org uh, option and then you then need to click on the download VirtualBox 7 uh, button. So if you click on download, you should then be redirected to the VirtualBox uh, downloads page. And on the page, you should then see a list of links for supported operating systems. So in my case, I'm going to choose the macOS Intel hosts link, but you can choose any other link for your operating system. Um, but I'm actually going to cancel the download because I had already done it earlier. So I'm just going to click on cancel, and then I'm then going to show you how to download the Kali Linux ISO image file. So run a Google search for Kali Linux, and then click on the Kali.org search result. This should then open up the Kali Linux homepage. So what you need to do is to then click on the download button on the homepage, and then that will then redirect you to the downloads page for the operating system. So I'm going to click on download, and then you should now see a whole list of download options available. So you can choose to download the installer images or the pre-packaged virtual machines, or any other option from the available download uh, list. So it just depends on what you'd like to use, they all work just fine. So in this case, I'm going to choose the 64-bit.iso image file uh, option. So if you just scroll down to the bottom section of the page, you just need to click on the download link for the 64-bit installer. So I'm just going to click on there to just kickstart the download process. So um, once the download process is complete, I'm then going to show you how to create the virtual machine uh, in VirtualBox version 7. So if you open up uh, VirtualBox, you then click, need to click on Machine and then click on New. So on the name field, you need to type in a name for the virtual machine. In my case, I'm going to just set that to Kali Linux VM. And then on the ISO image uh, section, select Other and then browse to the folder of where the ISO image file is located and then click on Open. So click on Next. And then on the username field, you then need to type in a username that you'd like to use for the virtual machine. So in my case, I'm just going to set that to administrator. And then you also need to type in a password on the password and repeat password fields. I'm also then going to set a custom host name. I'm just going to set that to Kali Linux uh, VM. And then I'm also going to set the domain name to Kali Linux VM dot uh, local. So if you just set that, you then need to click on the uh, install in background checkbox and also click on the guest editions checkbox and then click on next. So you then need to set the base memory. I'm just going to set that to four gigs of RAM and then set the number of processors to two and then click on next. So on the virtual hard disk section, just set the size to 50 gigs or more and then click on next. Click on finish to pro complete the uh, virtual machine creation process. All right, so there are some additional changes that need to be made. So I'm just going to open the settings page for the virtual machine, click on display, and then set the video memory to maximum. And then you also need to set the scale factor to 200%. And then I'm just going to make a change to the network configuration and then going to just attach that to the host only adapter. So once you've made that change, click on OK. Actually, let me just check the storage. And it looks like I don't have the Kali Linux ISO image file attached for some reason. So I'm just going to attach that and then click on OK. 
So once you you've made these changes, you then need to start the virtual machine. So once the virtual machine starts up, you should now see the uh, uh, first time boot options actually. So just select the start installer option to then kick start the installation process. Actually this will then open up the Kali Linux uh, installer. So it does take a moment to load up, so you need to be a bit patient for the load process to complete. So once the installer opens up, select English and then click on continue. Select your location and then click on continue. Select your keyboard layout and then click on continue. So um, there are some additional components that the installer needs to load up once you've made those selections. And then um, let's just see what's the next I need to configure here. I need to add a default root, so I'm just going to set that to yes and then click on continue. Configure network name server addresses, I'm just going to set that to the Google default uh, DNS servers and then click on continue. On the host name fields, I'm just going to set that again to Kali Linux VM and then click on continue as well as the host name, actually the domain name. I'm also then going to set that to Kali Linux VM .local. So just click on continue and then you should now see a prompt asking for a username. So I'm just going to set the username to administrator and then I'm then going to also set a password for this user. Um, so just type in the user there. I was actually hoping that the installer would take these parameters from the virtual machine creation wizard but for some reason that didn't work so I'm just going to repeat the process anyway. Okay, so it's now detecting the uh, virtual hard disk and then it should then all show us some partitioning options. So I'm just going to choose the use entire disk and set up LVM option and then click on continue. So I'm just going to include all files in one partition and then set the right changes to disk option to yes and then click on continue. Okay, so um, just click on continue once again. And then uh, I'm just going to choose yes to write changes to disk. Okay, so the system is now installing, the Kali Linux OS actually is now installing. And then during installation, you should now see a package manager configuration prompt. So you just need to select the appropriate options and then proceed through to then install the grab bootloader. So um, the installation is actually now completing. And then once the installation is done, I'm actually then also going to show you how to uh, create a uh, VirtualBox uh, shared folder. So the installation should take about um, five minutes or less, depending on the performance of your virtual machine. Actually, the performance of your host computer in the hardware resources that you've also allocated to the virtual machine. So uh, I'm just waiting for the installation process to complete and then once it's done the virtual machine should actually now restart and then you just need to then allow it to boot into the newly installed operating system. Let me just log into the Kali Linux OS um, just to show you that I've actually successfully completed the install. Okay, so this is what the interface looks like and I can just scale up or scale down or actually set it to full screen mode if you'd like. So next, I'm then going to show you how to create a VirtualBox shared folder. So this actually allows you to access your host, com the files on your host computer from within the uh, virtual machine. So open up uh, VirtualBox and then click on settings for the virtual machine and then click on the shared folder tab. Click on add and then on the folder path se section, click on add. So you need to select a folder you'd like to access. In this case, I'd like to access the downloads folder. So just select the auto mount and make permanent options and then click on OK. So click on OK. And then uh, I'm just going to restart the virtual machine so that these changes will actually take effect. So if you restart the virtual machine, when, once we boot back into the VM, we should then be able to access this uh, folder. So uh, again, the boot process does take a minute, so you just need to be, need to be a bit patient. 
Okay, so I'm just going to type in my Kali Linux username and password and then click on login. So if you open up the um, file explorer for the Kali Linux OS, uh, let me just uh, click on open folder and then if you check on where it says devices, you should actually now see your downloads directory there. So that way you can, whatever you download in the downloads folder on your host computer, you should be able to also access it from your virtual machine. And that's it. You've successfully installed Kali Linux on uh, VirtualBox version 7. I hope this tutorial has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.